is part 1 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss what is WCF and why should we use WCF. So what's WCF? WCF stands for Windows Communication Foundation. It's released as part of .NET 3.0. WCF is Microsoft platform for building distributed and interoperable applications. First, let's understand what we mean by distributed and interoperable application. So what's a distributed application? In very simple terms, a distributed application is an application where parts of it run on two or more computer nodes. Distributed applications are also called as connected systems. Let's now look at an example. Look at this diagram here. A web application is running on one machine and the web service that this web application is consuming is running on another machine. So this is a connected system. If you have watched part 7 from the ASP.NET Web Services tutorial, in that video, we have developed an ASP.NET Web application that consumes a weather web service. The web application that we have developed is running on my machine, but the weather web service that this web application is consuming is running on another machine that's present somewhere in the world. So that is a connected system there. Now let's look at another example of a connected system. We may have an enterprise web application with these tiers, presentation, business, and data access. And each of these tiers may be running on a different machine. Now you may be wondering, why would somebody break down an application into different tiers, and why would they deploy those tiers on different machines? That's basically to improve the scalability of the application. First, let's understand what we mean by scalability. Scalability means, as the number of users increase, you don't want the performance of the application to degrade. Okay. Now, if you have a few visitors to your application, then probably you can deploy all of the tiers on a single machine because single machine can handle the request from few users. But then if you are expecting hundreds and thousands of users, obviously to handle the request from all of these users, you know, you need more hardware, more processing capability. So what you do is you deploy your tiers on different machines and these different machines has got their own processors and memory. So basically they will be able to handle more requests because the presentation logic is running on one machine, business logic is running on a separate machine, data access logic on a different machine. So instead of having all this logic running on a single machine, if we deploy them on different machines, obviously they will be able to handle more requests without degrading the performance. So your application will be better scalable. Now let's turn our attention to understand the motivation for building distributed applications. Why would somebody want to build distributed applications? There are several reasons for this. I have listed two of them here. One of the reasons could be that an enterprise application may need to use the services provided by other enterprises. For example, an e-commerce application may be using PayPal service for payments. There are hundreds and thousands of websites today that sell products. When we purchase products from the website, at the time of checkout, you may have noticed on the checkout page that you can pay for the items that you have purchased using PayPal. So when you click on that button, what's happening there? The vendor web application there is actually connecting to the PayPal service. So basically, the web application itself is running on the vendor web server, but the PayPal service that that application is talking to is running on a PayPal web server. So that's a connected system there again. And another reason why we may build a distributed application is for better scalability, and we have discussed what we mean by scalability just now. The same example. All right, now let's understand what we mean by an interoperable application. An application that can communicate with any other application that is built on any platform is called as an interoperable application. We know that web services are interoperable. And why are web services are interoperable? Because they use open protocols and message formats. Web services use HTTP protocol and XML message format. Any client, any application built on any platform can understand these uh, protocols and open standards. So obviously, web services are interoperable. But .NET remoting services are not interoperable. Now, if we have to use a .NET remoting service, then both the client and the server has to be built using a .NET. Now, 
what technology choices did we have before WCF to build these distributed applications. We had several of them actually. We had enterprise services, .NET remoting, web services, MSMQ and there are a few others as well. So in spite of having so many technologies to build distributed applications, why did Microsoft come up with WCF? So why should we be actually use WCF. Let's understand this with an example. Let's take this scenario. Let's say we have two clients and we need to implement a service for them. So the first client is using Java application to interact with our service. So for interoperability, this clients want messages to be in XML format and the protocol to be HTTP. So to satisfy this first client requirement, we would end up implementing a web service. So web services use HTTP protocol and XML message format. And we know that XML over HTTP offers interoperability. So the requirement of the first client is met. So we have a web service there. Now let's say the second client has said he wants binary message over TCP protocol. Now it's the same service, exactly the same service, but he just want a different protocol and a different message format. Now, to satisfy the requirement of this client, we end up writing a .NET remoting service. And remoting is a different technology altogether. So it's, it has a completely different programming model to that of web services. So now the developer has to learn a different technology because the client has different needs. He wants different message format and different transport protocol. But the service itself is the same. The application logic, data access logic, everything is the same. It's just that the messages has to be for this client in binary format and the protocol has to be TCP. For the first client, the protocol has to be HTTP and the message format has to be XML. So to satisfy these two client requirements, we ended up developing a web service and a remoting service. Okay, which means developers have to be familiar with both of the technologies. So Microsoft thought that this is not a good situation for their communication technologies framework to be in. That's why to unify and bring all these communication technologies under one roof, Microsoft has come up with a single programming model that's called as WCF. Windows Communication Foundation. So WCF is going to unify everything that is remoting, web services, uh, enterprise services, and then MSMQ, all the other communication technologies that we have already today. So now let's actually see how the service is going to change if we use WCF. Look at this with WCF. We have a single service and then to satisfy the requirements of the different clients, we have exposed different endpoints. For the first client, he wants XML message format over HTTP protocol. So there's one endpoint, you know, which is going to transmit messages in XML format and using HTTP protocol. And to satisfy the requirement of the second client, we have configured another endpoint, which uses TCP protocol and binary messages. Okay, so here we don't have to change the application code to configure these endpoints. All you do is in a configuration file, you specify or configure your endpoint. Now let's say we have a third client and he wants XML message over TCP protocol. To satisfy that client requirement, all we do is we expose another endpoint. So basically we have got a single service, but then to satisfy the requirements of different clients, we are configuring different endpoints. So this is a web service. This is a .NET remoting service. So with a single WCF service, we are able to achieve both the things. Not only that, there are several endpoints that we can configure and several bindings as well. We'll discuss all this endpoint configuration, binding configuration later video session. But for now, you might have understood, you know, what WCF is and why should we be using it. So with WCF, there's really no need to use .NET remoting or web services or enterprise services or MSMQ. We can basically achieve all of those using WCF and simply configuring endpoints. In part two of this video series, we'll discuss implementing a web service to exchange messages in XML format using HTTP protocol. 
and we'll also discuss implementing a remoting service to exchange messages in binary format using TCP protocol. Along the way, we'll get a feel of how different these technologies are. And in part 3, we'll discuss implementing a single WCF service and configuring different endpoints to support different transport protocols and message formats. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.